It was here in the port pic area that the shooter made his first stop in a deadly path of destruction. Now, CBC News has learned it was also here that police encountered a woman with whom the killer had been in a long-term relationship. She had been forcibly restrained, but survived. It's unclear whether she was injured or to what extent, just one part of a rapidly moving chaotic scene. Do we want to uh, cut the ceiling? No, not for sure. It's in quite a ways, the actual house. They're bringing the victims out to that intersection from the actual scene. But no, they don't know if they've caught him. I don't know. As darkness turned to light, the manhunt persisted for hours. The RCMP are still saying very little about what happened yesterday. I would like nothing more than to provide the media and public with the timeline, but it literally is still a work in progress. And it would be unfair and inappropriate for us to give that out in its current state. We are very close, uh, I would say within a day. But today, the force said nothing at all. Through multiple sources, CBC News has learned more about how the manhunt ended. Roger, we have reports of the suspect down at the Enfield Big Stop. Police have said they shot and killed the suspect here at this gas station Sunday morning. What they aren't saying is that it was only by chance. Police had tweeted Gabriel Wartman was no longer driving a police cruiser, but now a silver SUV. In fact, he had stolen another car from one of his victims, Gina Goulet. It was low on gas. And then, a remarkable coincidence. When he pulled up to the Irving Big Stop, the emergency response team and a canine unit officer were already there, also filling up in an unmarked vehicle. Sources say it was one of these officers who shot the gunman. Yesterday, police said they're holding back the timeline because there are still gaps in it. They said any mistakes could impact both their investigation and the victim's families. Kayla Hounsel, CBC News, Halifax.